Texas, Bama. Who's ready for the game of the week in college football? I know I am. This is Sports Guy talking that you guys are watching and listening to. I am Dustin Tran, your host, as I am here today to talk about number 11 ranked Texas going up against number three ranked Alabama at Bama. Texas has been an up and down team over the Steve Sarkeesian years, but they did play Bama very tough last season as they narrowly lost to them by the score of 20 to 19. With Quinn Ewers finally healthy for Texas, this could be the year they force an upset on Bama. Before I say anything else though, I want to present you guys with a topic question. So here it is. Will Quinn Ewers in Texas upset Alabama? And honestly, the answer to this question is going to be dependent on how Texas is going to game plan against Alabama. Obviously, if Alabama gets ahead early by two scores, this is going to be very problematic for Texas. Not because Texas can't come back from behind, but because of the fact that Bama's run game is just too dominant and that they have a really good defense. Obviously, Bama knows that they need to be playing smash mouth football this year and that they need to be running the football a ton while playing excellent defense while putting less emphasis on quarterback play. Now, Jalen Moreau is not a bad quarterback, but he's no Bryce Young. He's no Tua Tungla Valoa. He's no Mac Jones. He's no Jalen Hurts. He might be a solid quarterback in college football, but he's not going to be this future NFL starter taking place. Jalen Moreau is a dual threat quarterback, and that's all he is. He's a great runner, and he's an okay thrower, but he's not a great quarterback whatsoever. Obviously, Texas knows that they have the better quarterback at hand because Quinn Ewers is going to be a future first-round pick for an NFL team as he is going to ball out at Texas this year. I could see him winning the high trophy this year he was not my Heisman pick but I could see him becoming a candidate in there I could see Texas winning the Big 12 I picked Texas to win the Big 12 when I was talking about football with my friends in terms of college football but if Texas loses this game then it's not going to be a good sign for Texas in terms of their college football playoff hopes to me this is the game that is going to decide who's going to get into the college football playoff because before the season start I had Georgia I had Michigan I had Ohio State and then my fourth team was Texas I got a lot of blowback when I was saying that Texas was going to make the college football playoff this year because a lot of people don't believe that they're going to win the Big 12 and that even if they do win the Big 12, they shouldn't be picked over an SEC team, which is Bama. Obviously, the reason why I don't have Bama winning the SEC this year is because of the fact that Georgia is just simply too dominant. Not only is Georgia too dominant, they're going to win the SEC, they're going to win in the playoffs, they're going to win the national championship, they're going to pretty much win at everything they do, whether they take foot on a practice field or not. That's how dominant Georgia is. Georgia is just so dominant that everybody else is playing for second place. I think Bama is a good football team but I don't think they were a great football team. Bama doesn't scare me now the way that they did when I was a kid. When I was a kid I used to fear looking at Alabama every week because I just knew that Alabama oh yeah they definitely won't win the game. It was not a question of whether or not Alabama was going to win that week. It was a question of how bad Alabama was going to smack up that opponent and for me I think that Alabama no longer has that fear. Now I look at Alabama it's like okay yeah they're still a good team but if we take care of things the right way if we practice the right way if we play the right way if we coach the right way then we can absolutely beat Bama. Nick Saban is no longer in his prime of coach. He's still a fantastic coach and he's still the GOAT coach, but he's no longer the same guy that he was 10, 15 years ago. Alabama these days, they're just pretty dependent on having to run the football and play good defense. Alabama is too one-dimensional when you look at this roster. Alabama has to rely on running the football and playing good defense. If Alabama gets behind by multiple scores, this is not a team that is built to come back from behind. This is not in the past where if you get Alabama down by 14, it means nothing because Tua is going to bail you out or because Jalen Hurts is going to bail you out or Mac Jones is going to bail you out as well or even Bryce Young. Bryce Young was a pretty great quarterback at Bama. I'm kind of surprised that he never won a national title at Alabama considering the greatness of Bryce Young at least in the college game. I don't think Bryce Young is a great NFL quarterback but I think that Bryce Young is a great collegiate QB. Now let's talk about Quinn Ewers real quick. When you talk about Quinn Ewers, he's really accurate with the football. He throws a nice deep ball. He does a lot of things really well. He is really smart with the football as well. Quinn Ewers knows how to manage the game and he also knows how to make explosive plays down the field. I would have to assume that he would be better than Hudson Card, who was the quarterback last year for Texas when they were going up against Bama because of the fact that Quinn Ewers got his shoulder messed up. Now, if Texas was able to keep the game competitive against Alabama with Hudson Card at Texas, there's no reason for me to expect Quinn Ewers to do more or less the same thing, even if it is at Alabama this year. I know that Quinn Ewers will play in a hostile environment, but Quinn Ewers, this is the kind of environment that you're going to be playing in come Sundays when you're going to be an NFL quarterback. You're going to need to be able to know how to handle these kind of situations. But I believe in Quinn Ewers. I believe in Steve Sarkeesian. I believe in the running game. I believe in the receivers. I know the defensive backs for Texas are kind of suspect. The good news for Texas is though, Alabama doesn't really have great receivers. Alabama is not going to beat you by throwing the football. Alabama is going to beat you by running the football, which is a good thing. Because if you're Texas, you can go ahead and prepare on stopping the run. As long as they can get their front seven straight,
straight, they're going to be fine. And I think Texas, they're going to go up two scores early at Bama. They got to be able to control the tempo. They got to be able to run the football. They got to be able to convert the third downs. Quinn Ewers has got to make big plays happen down the field. He can't do anything stupid. Obviously, they got to win the turnover battle. I think Texas also has to play time possession, play a little bit of that medicine on Alabama because of the fact that if Alabama has possession for a long amount of time, then that's going to be problematic for Texas because they can't play their game. Now, Texas's offense is all about putting playmakers in space. So that means if I'm Texas, I'm going to go ahead and put guys in positions to be successful. I'm putting Xavier Worth and Jordan Whittington in space. I'm going to go ahead and call the RSOs that are out there. Those are run screen options for anybody that doesn't know what that means. I'm going to go ahead and run the RPOs. That's the run pass option for anybody that doesn't know what the RPO is. I'm calling a lot of RPOs. I'm calling a lot of RSOs. I'm calling a lot of play actions. I'm calling a lot of runs. Don't be afraid to call a lot of misdirection. Don't be afraid to control the clock. Don't be afraid to be more physical than Bama. Texas is going to have to be smart with how they play. They can't just go back and shotgun and just throw the ball every single play because as much as I really like Quinn Ewers, he is not that kind of quarterback where you can throw the ball 50, 60 times and expect to win, especially against Bama's defense because although Bama is not as dominant defensively as what they were 10, 15 years ago, they're still really good at what they do defensively. I still fear Bama. I'm just not scared of Bama the way that I was when I was a kid. Like I've said though for Texas, how does Texas go and win this game? They're going to have to deal with crowd noise. They got to be able to go on silent count. They got to be able to not have to take timeouts because it almost delay of games. They got to be able to pass the ball in order to open up the run. And of course, they've got to be able to contain Jalen Moreau in the pocket. Make him a passing QB. Make him be a quarterback first, athlete second. If Jalen Moreau is an athlete first, that is going to be problematic for Texas. Now, when I look at Alabama's running backs, obviously they can run the football very well. Chase McClellan, Roy Dell Williams, Jamario Miller, Justice Haynes, you name it. They can run the football really well. They got a lot of good running backs on their roster. The O-line is also pretty good as well. I mean, Bama, they are a running team and they are a smash mouth football team and they are not afraid to make sure that everybody knows that they are a smash mouth football team but ultimately what is going to have to win in the game quarterback play because what's the most important position in all of football quarterback and who has the better quarterback texas now the thing with texas is they got to be smart with how they use their quarterback they can't be using their quarterback to throw the ball every single play but they got to be able to use their quarterback in tough situations they got to be able to say to Quinn Ewers, okay, man, don't turn over the football, convert the third downs, make the plays happen down the field, and be able to play our style of football. We got to be able to go up 14 0, 17 0 on Bama. Because if you go down 10 0 or 14 0 to Bama in that environment, it's going to be really hard to come back from those guys. I think they got to slow the pace down and that they can't get into a shootout. Although I think that if they could do that, they could win that game. But I think that they got to control the tempo and they got to keep Bama off the field. They got to keep their defense fresh. I think that Texas, they got to be able to control the line of scrimmage and they got to be able to run the football and they got to be able to convert the key downs and obviously they're going to have to win the turnover battle despite all what i said though i still think this game is going to be really tight because bama is still a good football team they're not going to lay down and just say okay yeah we're just getting manhandled at the line of scrimmage yeah we're going to get blown out let's just go ahead lay down move on to the next game they're not going to go ahead and do that they don't care how much they're going to be down by they're going to keep battling to the end of that whistle i think it's going to be a tight game i think ultimately though texas is going to win by three i got texas winning by the score 27 to 24. It's not going to be a fourth quarter comeback, but I think Alabama, they're going to rally. They're going to make it interesting. I think Texas is going to be up 10 late before Bama scores a touchdown, make it a three point game. I think Texas recovers the onside kick. I think Texas is going to get a big time win at Bama and they're going to prove to people that they are indeed back in terms of national relevance. I think Texas is going to upset Bama this weekend. I could totally see it happening. I could see Quinn Ewers playing a good game. He's going to throw for two touchdowns. He's not going to turn over the football. The running game is going to be efficient. It's not going to be great, but it won't have to be and for texas they got to also use their tight end which is sanders sanders is a pretty good tight end they just got to go ahead and use him if they go ahead and use the players that they have in the roster there is no reason for me to not expect texas to win this ball game they just got to be able to play the right way and they got to be able to coach the right way if they could almost won that game last year with hudson carter quarterback then they can absolutely win this year's game with quinn ewers at quarterback so that is why texas will upset alabama as they will win by the score of 27 to 24 remember go ahead and subscribe the sports guy talking like the video and please comment down below if you guys do that i may shout you guys out in my instagram story every monday that will be for the at dustin Tran instagram account make sure to follow me on instagram at dustin Tran and that sports guy talking also go follow me on twitter at dustin Tran. again go ahead and do those things that i just told you guys to go do hope Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the content that was just produced. 
Peace out. I hope you enjoyed that video. Want more Sports Guy Talking, the home of great sports content? Make sure you click that subscribe button to get the latest from Sports Guy Talking. Go ahead and like the video. Comment down below. Check the description box on the video in order to follow my Instagram and Twitter. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the YouTube channel, Sports Guy Talking.